Demons were probably injured in the making of this film. This is Gomorrah. You want to see a ziggurat? There's really a ziggurat. Right. Look at this. You see ziggurats and uh, uh, pictures of ziggurats from Egypt to uh, South. They're everywhere. They're also in South Gomorrah. Look at that structure right there. Right in front of you on the screen. And she said, well, if you need to use this bedroom for anything while we're out of town, feel free. Did you hear about Gehenna? Tell me about, you know, we're going to drive through Gehenna. Did feel free to share wherever and however you like. The sun, but I'm not moving. No, around. no, I thought it that was, I thought it was the drone. This is an orb that comes into the screen while we're at Sodom and Gomorrah. Can okay, cross. okay, this is the, normally the one on the cross. Yeah. Okay, so that's the first one. The now father was cleaning and taking some pictures, and it was like this. He opened his eyes. Oh my god, it was the day of the cross, by the way. This is four days ago. This is four days ago. Uh, and, 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 and where is that? Where is that? Uh, that's in that's in Jerusalem at the Church of the. You are looking at the actual ancient ruins of Sodom and Gomorrah. I think this is Mike Hughes. This is Hi, the Mike. owner of Sunbeam. He was actually he, he came out with the whites. I don't know if he was here when they discovered it, but to use it. So one of the things she used it for was to have this liaison <laughs> with um, Stephen Tyler of Aerosmith. So now we are honored to be joined by a true rock legend. Uh, and, well, it doesn't appear to be just sand dunes. It appears to be something while they were there. Well, here's, here's the bottom line that's really the kicker. She didn't tell Todd Rundgren that it wasn't his. You know, a lot of times the artist gets the credit, but it's the songwriter who's left his imprint on America. And that is the case with our guest, Rick Derringer. Okay. I mean, it could certainly be the remnants of what was once a big city. So he, of course, assumed, oh, we're having a child. So they had Liv Rundgren at that time. That thing right there, that looked like a ziggurat in the ancient world said, I think this is worthwhile enough to invest in. He bought this one notebook of Johnny's for $100,000. He paid for this notebook. Take a look at this. Watch him pull that out of there. So, yes. But you're one of the only ones in the world that even has copies of I, these I, lyrics. She didn't give it to anybody else yet. I'm the only guy that has this right now, other than him. Okay, tell me, tell me about, uh, tell me about these sulfur. Bo oh, look at this thing. Look at the size of that chunk. Yeah, it's like a little firefly. Okay. <laughs> this is when John Lennon died. And this is the night John Lennon died. Oh my god, totally out of his mind. And you had talked to John Lennon right before that. I see. You have quite a few things that have happened on this on this Sea of Galilee. Denise was supposed to, my sister, her and her husband was her ex husband was a recording engineer. He was working was doing on the double uh, platinum. Yeah, the he was double working fantasy, on the double yeah. fantasy. Yep. Yeah. That night, oh, in, in the <laughs> and Todd raised her as his child. And was a good the, dad. Uh, you were the was Todd a good dad. parents. I, I was a, a whatever. But, uh, and they were yeah. supposed to go to. The and we were house. supposed to actually go to John's house that night. Isn't that weird? And she said and to he me called tonight, me up and she I, was, might have I was in Long him. Island and, and he, he said, said John's something. a little tired. He said so. Isn't yeah. that weird? And that was the night. Yeah. yeah. That's a very sad night. night. It's not even believable, really. It's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, ch yeah, check this out on the back here. You've got, uh, take a look. So we're actually looking at a piece. Here's, here's what it looks like when a piece of this ash gets excavated out of a wall of Sodom and Gomorrah. This was, uh, she, she the actress. conceived. <laughs> it worked was that it night while they were there. Well, here's, here's the bottom line that's really the kicker. And if you act now, we'll throw in more of it. There's a whole, there's a whole ball in there, but you, <laughs> Plus a Dead Sea steak knife. But this is what I found interesting. What do you mean they've been heavy duty? Well, this hate song and stuff, these lyrics up there. And that's where all that fog and stuff is back there. That's where, okay, so that's where the mountain is back in there. So Trey and Lance are out here in the middle of the desert. There's not a building or anything. They're looking for uh, those sulfur balls and stuff. And they come around one of those big sand dunes. And here in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of the desert. But Sodom, here are two 
gay guys on a pink beach towel. Okay. I mean, you can. Uh, um, you got nothing that I want. You got nothing that I need. I'd like to call you nasty names and watch you overdose on speed. Because that rise in that. I just don't dig you, baby. I wouldn't jive you. That's a natural fact. I just don't dig you, baby. Sodom, Gomorrah, Edna, Zabal. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, he goes. So he was a little bit ticked off at some gal he was with. Obviously. This, probably. Obviously. I mean, if you had the last hole on earth, girl, I believe I'd turn you down. I'd like to get a piece of chain, baby, and chase your ass around. <laughs> it's a heavy duty lyric. Oh, heavy duty's right. We're going to be going from the depths of the soul of Sodom and Gomorrah. Sitting on a pink beach towel. <laughs> two, two sodomites making out in the remains of what once was burned up because God didn't like that kind of thing. And that up there flying around in the sky up there, that's the drone that we had to buy in Jerusalem because we wrecked the other one into Bathsheba's place. Now that is a piece, now that's a piece of Sodom and Gomorrah. You're not going to find that anywhere else. The demoniac wise that, uh, that broke the chains over here. You've got Mount Hermon right over there. Of Sodom all the way up. And then over this way, as the boat kind of turns, you've got not only Tiberias. To the waters on which Jesus himself walked. Look at that sunset back there. But the most, uh, the most gorgeous sunset that you're ever going to see. Okay, we, you're right about that. It's the Lord that brought us here at this, this time of day. The actual Jesus boat on the Sea of Galilee. These are, these are the waters that Jesus walked on. But when I lived in Manhattan, it was a, a little more accessible than it's gotten. It's gotten really out of control now. I mean, I, I lived uh, down the street from Todd Rundgren, lived just a block from me, and Mick Jagger would stop in, knock on my door, uh, just to come in and, hey, you guys got a joint? We're about to go on a journey like nothing else on all earth. I said, like Kurt Cobain, the record company said, you got to do this, and you got to do this, and you got to do this. And Kurt Cobain one day said, no, I don't have to. Let me welcome you back in to the Holy Land. Look inside. This is, this is what it's out. This is what it looks like. All the way back to the very precision pages of the book of Genesis. But that, that's a, that is a pelt, that's a bullet from God right there, and there's a message in that. Right to the top of this thing. And uh, you can see how far down that is. That is just uh, an enormous drive. To Sodom and Gomorrah, which they told you wasn't real, correct? Right? You know, it crumples into these piles of ash. Just literally piles. Uh, I'm surrounded by ash. And it was sitting out here in this ash the other day where you had the two <laughs> the <sun rise. laughs> two homosexuals that are sitting out here. Hello, welcome to Sodom. I thought I could not believe that. They know where Sodom and Gomorrah is, don't they? Your science teams don't know where it is. Your tourist maps don't know where it is. But I know where it is, don't I? You're sitting there talking to me. And you're in Sodom right now, right here, real time. I'm getting covered in its ash from both the earth and the sky. Behind us, this well, is it's, it's just fabulous to me. I mean, it's just such a real. Uh, I don't know that I expected to be as moved as I was to the soothing waters, which you're looking at on the screen right back here the drone coming at you of uh, the Sea of Galilee on the screen back there. Good fishing here? Oh yeah, it's great. I know you got your uh, ready to go. On the streets where Jesus suffered, lived. Yeah, I uh, 
I think it's, it's fairly safe to say there ain't anything like this. Rose up to heaven, right here we are. We had access to go in to see John Tell Lennon in his apartment. Why must Liv Tyler conceived in your bed? Well, this uh, <laughs> apartment that I had that I told you guys about. <laughs> this is your backstage. I've seen Rand Holmes. This is your backstage. Green rooms. That's a sweet. That's a sweet. That's a sweet. The fireballs, the, um, the 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 sulfur balls end at the edge of the city. The, no, yeah. They only fall on the city, right? Yes. <laughs> All the valley of hell, because that is where the old Canaanites, you know, in the old time they used to bury kids at that valley. That's why it's called the valley of hell. It was gyrating and bouncing and looked like arms were pushing from the inside and couldn't see anybody and as I'm filming Trey with the, the GoPro I'm looking and I'm trying to keep him in focus and I'm looking because I can't believe what I, that I'm even seeing somebody out here in the desert I can't even believe this I mean look at this it just keeps going it's literally Mike's down there laughing the young man that as I looked had his head peeking out of this sleeping bag was making some kind of a yell with his tongue. A battery is down to 4%, but this is a hole in Sodom and Gomorrah. All I had to do was light the wall. Here's another one that he found. Here's another pellet. Let me let me scoot back. This man right here, he is Wasim. He is the son of one of those special guides from Holy Land. We praise you and honor you and glorify you tonight. And in the midst of all of that ash retaining the shape of buildings are the overkill of these sophisticated little missile-like packages. We know that uh, we, we are nothing without you and the talent you've given us. So we just ask that you allow that talent to be used to entertain these people tonight. Let them have the experience and the concert that they've always dreamed of. And you get all the praise and glory because it's all because of you, Lord. So we thank you very much and ask your blessing tonight. In Yeshua's name, amen. 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 spare his cheek and want me to kiss his cheek. So I would, and he'd talk to me and say, hello, Lady Jenda, how are you today? These caves out here, he's a guy that's crawled all over him, and he's a man that, uh, <laughs> he discovered the 12th cave. He had a scroll in it, and he's on the phone right now. Say hi, Aaron. Aaron. They say they're doing good and they're sitting home on their couches and they didn't have to survive the sun to get out here. I was born in the Lower East I'm, I'm, I'm literally a Lower East Side I'm kid. I'm glad I didn't oh, okay. New York. New York City. I was raised in Tony. Here. Okay. the top of the building. But to actually make it to down in here where Sodom and Gomorrah is. Wow. Okay. Now, since we're actually talking about clips of, of entities from the, uh, from, not from entities, but from Holy Land, is what you've been watching. Actually, you've been, yeah, you have been watching this disc here. But since we're talking about clips of, of entities, and I held back, forgive me, but I held back my, my good ones, and also the conclusion of many, look, if you buy the disc, you obviously want to save back some of the good stuff but you've got a taste of it. I also wanted to play, there were always some clips that I wanted to pack in these two discs of entities, and we're gonna try and pair these up in a set where you can get both. But in entities, even with four hours of documentary in entities, it was stuff I just couldn't fit that I always wanted to. I'm gonna play, I think this is the appropriate place to play a couple of, these are some rednecks talking to a demon jack. Just 
I got spirits living over in my house, so so you're more than welcome to come over there and visit visit me because I like to get to know you better, Jack. Because of who it was that delivered me this tape, some of the clips of which I dolled up and put inside the interviews, I certainly didn't play all of it. But because of, uh, look, because of his job, the guy, I can't say who delivered me the tape. In my view, I know, this is a good friend of mine. In my view, the tape behind me is as good as gold. This legitimately is some moonshine style hillbillies talking to a demon. You just seem like you'd be a pretty cool guy. We heard a lot of good things about you, Jack, and we appreciate you taking the time and effort, what you had to do to communicate with us. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Jack. Thank you, Jack. I have a question, Jack. So they're using an EVP or an EMP or whatever it's called. There was no funny business with the, with the device there. When the green light goes, bloop, 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 that's, when the, that's when the demon thing is, is talking. I'll tell you, that's definitely a no. Jack, were you sitting in here a little while ago on the bed looking yep. out the window? He, he popped it. Jack, is there anything here hidden that you want us to find? Yep. Oh! In fact, what I'm gonna do with tapes like this, this went on for nearly like 10 minutes, so sitting there talk, like, like nobody's business, just sitting there talking to a demon. And this kind of stuff, the normal person doesn't know how commonplace this actually Yes. Well, the best way to communicate that is through the uh, these tech, these recorders, and because it'll be a trial and error method to try to do this. Have you this is not rare in the metaphysical world. People talking to stuff, things that poof right out of thin air, and most of it is not unless you are in line with the Holy Spirit, and even that will have a whole different flavor to it. The, the demonic stuff will have sales pitches for you. Have you been trying to speak to the recorder, Jack? <coughs> speak into the recorder. Yeah. Was it you that said, when Holly was looking through the photos the other night, was it you that said to keep going? Yes. Is it in the barn or in, well, is it in the barn where we need to look? Oh, God. Right down. <coughs> we got it. <coughs> Is where we need to look here in the house, in the mansion. Little deal cutters, even the alien things, they pop out. They're literally coming. Here's the short version of this. Little alien guys, where do you think they're coming from? There's a realm that runs just, but this is even what your biblical text tell you. There's a little dimension like ghetto version Earth, where they boop, pop right out of and try and cut deals. Here's the first question you ask. I don't care if they're promising to make you a rock star or famous on Facebook. Did you cause the tunnel to collapse? No, he wouldn't cause it. <coughs> yeah, are you running out of energy, Jack? You getting tired? Yeah. yeah. Okay, I think we'll let Jack rest. Let's ask a question, though. Is, is there, is, is what we need to find, is it off this property? That's what, I'm, yes. Off. Why is it that they need to cut a deal with you? And are you willing to trade your entire eternity for little trinkets in this place? Do we need to? Is there? Is there? Is there? Are there clues on this property as to where we need clips like this one? What I, in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going. I'm going to start with this one, but I'm going to put other things up on Garden in the Nutshell stuff. I just couldn't fit in films like Entities. In it, this is a slam bash, and so is Holy Land through the supernatural. But stuff I just couldn't fit anywhere else. I'm gonna pop it right out there on the God in the Nutshell channel. So you can watch it in its raw version. Maybe I'll doll it up a little right there online. But more than that. Uh, we need to really let them rest. Yeah. We're, Jack? I think it's a I think there's something here that, 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 that'll give us a clue as to what it is. Yeah, but it's in the it's in Lebanon. Can we find can we find enough clues here to know what it's all about? That's why he said get, keep going the will other you, night. Will you be here tomorrow um, when we come yeah, back? Yeah, the pictures. Yeah, yep. They'll be here tomorrow. Not just the demonic, but stuff that's the holy and understanding what the holy is. Because that'll make the little demon guys, little alien things that pop out from another realm look like jokes when you begin to see what the Spirit of God truly is. Holy name.
this guy right here. In fact, both of these deer seized on the end with little demon dudes. There may be a bunch of them in there. Hey, that's the way life is. It's a bunch of little demon stuff. So, I won't be back for a little bit, but I just want to thank you for uh, talking with us, and especially talking to me since uh, first time I've been over here. Even David writes, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. We don't end with demons on these. We end with the power of God. And so with all the stuff, I've got some stuff to come that's gonna knock your socks off. Would it be dangerous for me as well? Yeah. But I can still do it, right, Jack? Let me share something with you. These, these shots behind me, that's the God particularly. That's the garden of the those are glory shots from the garden of the gods right there. Let me let me share something with you that I just privately share without dolling this up and editing it a bunch. In one of my video, the Trump video, I think it was, I was using clips from Kim Clement, and Kim said a lot of things about the future. And so have other people that tie right in. We're gonna be sharing them on gardenandnutshell.com. Full color, the history of this place is told in advance. But the little demon things, little demon worshipers, that stuff, none of it from the top, that's how it's always been. The wickedest people are at the top. That's the structure. That's what God is going to change in this place. The structure of this place, attorneys in law school, the best liar wins. The best one with the best lie wins. That's actually openly taught is what's taught. Your politicians, the greediest guy who does the most scheming, he's your most popular guy, right? Same thing with the top of your world, all the little Nimrods, the ruler empires, most of them, not all. But that's the way they got there. They're the most murderous, the most corrupt, the most full of lies, and the most full of greed and nonsense. That's the structure. That's the little pyramid with the eye on top. That's it. That's how that guy got there. He cut little deals, whether he knew he was cutting deals or didn't know he was cutting deals. That's how he got to be the little eye speaking for the God on the other side at the top of the pyramid. But when Kim said in the Trump video, he said, uh, the Jezebel, Trump was running against Hillary. Jezebel has run away the prophets and even Elisha. But God says, come back. Now, why did Elisha, why did he run from, he ran from Jezebel. A lot of pastors share this story. With the priests of Baal, they put out their altars and Elijah, Elijah said, where are your gods? And they're tearing their clothes and they're screaming because their gods are not appearing for them. They're not appearing for them. And then Elijah says, pour water on the wood. And then he goes out there and he calls. This was a prophet of God. And this is in Israel. This is occurring too. That's why God refers to Israel so often as a whore. It's not a sexual. It can be used as sexual connotations. The number one thing that God, the number one commandment of the Ten Commandments is to have no other gods before yod he vov he that is the name of God. Before God, no other gods before God. The priests of Baal were tearing their clothes. Elijah, he went before God, the God, the creator of this place that you're sitting in. The creator of the place the little demon guys come out of too. The creator of this place. He says, pour more water on the wood. Well, but after this, Elijah, he, he, couldn't, he couldn't hear the voice of the Lord anymore. He couldn't hear it. And Jezebel, she said, many of the, pre the priests were killed by the fire that consumed that altar that was flushed with water. It consumed it. But then he couldn't hear the voice of the Lord after that. And Jezebel says, well, what you did to my priests ain't nothing compared to what I'm gonna do to you when I get my hands on you. So he ran, he took off the big bad prophet who was so bold, he took off and ran and then he couldn't find the voice of the Lord anymore. He couldn't find, he ran here and there and yonder, thought this, the big rumble, the big sound, the big shock and awe. No, 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 no. No, finally, it was the still small voice, just like in Kim's last tape that he was singing repeatedly over and over. You will never silence that still, small voice of the Lord. And the Lord said, no, no, that's who I am. That's still not the Lord, the devil puts on a show. And God had honored 
what he did out there before the priests of Baal because one of the things that God doesn't like is his name challenged. And this was a priest of the Almighty. So God honored it. But after that, because of life, he went and he did his own thing. I'm going to show everybody. There was pride inside. That's the next thing that God hates, is pride. God's already laid out the foundations of what he expects in this place. And he's got a lot of surprises in store. But the things on the other side that are put him on a shelf, look, it's, it's pretty impressive. First time you see something pop right out of thin air. But the first, there should really be three questions that you ask. Who am I? Where did I come from? What happens next? And when something pops out from another realm, don't get so impressed by it that you forget to ask, who is it I'm really speaking to? And what is it you want with me? Jack, since I already know where the portal is in outside Eureka Springs, would it be all right for me to, to do some portal research here? Well, I thought we would close this thing out with some, this one here, with some, some shots from, and I'm not giving away my glory shots. Of, Okay, so what he just said is that the only place on earth, and this is the guy with one of the founders of the site. This is Mike, he owns Sunbeam America. Here comes the drone. Yeah, but this is, this sulfur right here is, this is the only place, this place right out here, this burned old city, this burned old limestone city called Gomorrah. See, and these sulfur balls end at the edge, and Lance nearly wanting to pull another one out because they're all over the place. I'm going to close this out with a few more clips from from the Holy Land. There were maybe some demon. I think they were probably <laughs> these things were literally in the flesh in Gomorrah. When I'll lay it in your hands, I'll let you decide. If you listen carefully to the, these clips. I'm on the phone with Mike and I'm lighting sulfur balls that came out of the walls of Sodom and Gomorrah in the background where the unusual couple of fellas should be. You're going to begin to hear shriek-like sounds and howls and eerie heckles from the guys with the bowl of fire in Gomorrah. It kind of looks like the pit of hell. What? But uh, as we rode back to town and I got back into the motel and I began to examine my pictures. And the full story of the demons at Gamora, I'm saving that for the, for the videos. But here's another touch of it. Okay, this is processed to its purest form is what, what, he's, what he's stating here. And... Um, doesn't end with demons in holy land. No, 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 no. This thing ends powerfully is the way it ends. This is the, uh, the Sea of Galilee. You know I love, you know I just, I love, I'm a sucker for beautiful sunsets. And I think God is too. Right in the This is the boat behind me. There's Actually, to be honest with you, this whole thing is a smorgasbord. The Lord put on, did, put on a supernatural smorgasbord for us. And I think he did it so that you can have these in your hands and look at them so they can be in clips like this. This is the most incredible, most incredible sunset. We were all day late. Shouldn't even have been there, and that was the only day he could have done. And there's never sunsets like this. I'm Trey Smith, 
God bless. Go over to GodInTheNutshell.com or visit on Facebook. Make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel. And Lance, can you see from up there that pathway, how deep in it goes? It goes. I put up a collection. It's got if you haven't got if you got any of these, then get a copy of Holy Land. I took the price way down on it. I took the price for the holidays, whatever time this is. The shipping is always free. Here's both of these. If you have not seen any of these yet, do this for yourself or your family members for the holidays. Do this for them. There's no documentaries like these. Either one of them. Earth. Oh, you can see? Okay, so you can see through this doorway? Yeah. Oh my gosh, look at that. Look at that. Okay, well right now we're standing and we're looking through one of the ancient homes in Sodom and Gomorrah. I'm Trey Smith. God bless every last one of you on the other side of the screen.